how to disconnect the draw fan and the afterburner on the B mower, and why would you want to. Important, make sure to unplug B mower before working on it. The electrical board is located on the right hand side if you're looking at the face of it. There are five screws that you will have to unscrew and then you gently pull the side plate towards you. There's still some wires attached to a fan where you see those four screws and those vent holes. There's a fan right there and wires are attached so do not pull too hard or you might yank those wires off. And then you just gently set the side plate down. The draw fan wire is over there on the left and the afterburner plug is over there on the right. Just make sure you're careful when pulling these off. You need to use a pair of pliers and pinch uh, like kind of in the middle to release the pin. That will release the plug. It should come off pretty easily. If you're tugging on it, that means the pin's not disconnected and you won't be able to pull it out. You have to get that pin out of the center and it should slide right off if you do so. Make sure to put some electrical tape over the connectors. You don't want those touching any metal. They are inline wires, so make sure you cover those wires and the connectors with some electrical tape. And here is why you want to do this. On the BMOR, using a one pound setting at seven minutes, 25 seconds, a uh, fan kicks on and so does the afterburner. This is the help with the smoke that's going to be being produced. Uh, you can see in the graph the green line will be the roar and the blue line is the bean temp. And you can see quite a drastic dip in the roar and you can also see a bend in the temperature of the bean with no changes to the bee more. That is something you do not want to happen during your roast. Especially if you're roasting a small amount like this one was a four ounce roast and the first crack was basically starting right when that draw fan was kicking on so it was drastic the roast did not turn out well at all you can see that dip in the roar because i was going down in temperature as well trying to just draw out the rtd and just look at the red line that roar it dipped dramatically it's crazy how much that thing dipped when the fan turned on if you're on the one pound setting and you hit first crack right around 730, you definitely don't want this draw fan on and the afterburner. It will really affect your roast. Here is a roast that I did, another log. I used to try and compensate for that. You can see right around 715, I put the B more setting, uh, this, this is manual, P5. I was at manual P4 that I hit just before four minutes. And just to try to offset that roar and the drop in the bean temp, and then back around uh, nine minutes, just before nine minutes, I hit P4 again, just to try to offset that. And it was a big pain to try and do this. Every bean was different, hitting you know different temperatures, different times. So I thought, well, what happens if I got rid of the draw fan and the afterburner? After some chatting with David, who contacted me through my YouTube channel, uh, he explained to me where the draw fan was and how to disconnect it. He actually told me you could hook it up to the light switch and control it by that as well. So here is a test without the draw fan, and I found that the roar went up. So I was like, uh-oh, what's going on here? And you could see... I started dropping the B more down in the temperature to like P1 all the way down just to try and compensate for that. I was unexpected that heat change that caused the roar to go up and also the bean temp to go up. So I was like, okay, something's going on. And that's where the afterburner comes in play. So I put a thermocouple on that and here's what that looked like. You can see the red line is going to be the thermocouple placed on the afterburner. You can see it took way off. It shot up to over 850 degrees. So I decided to test to see what would happen if I disabled the afterburner because I didn't want a bunch of heat coming in and the draw fan off. And here's my test result here. You can see the roar looks pretty stable. These beans are a little difficult. They really start taking off after the first crack. So that's why the roar kind of goes up a little bit. But it was my first test to see 
and it was a success. There was no draw fan and no afterburner or the smoke depressor. And this next graph is a nice looking graph. This is exactly what I would like to see in my rows. I'm in full control of my temp. My roar looks good, a nice pretty even line. My bean temp looks really good. This roast turned out really well, very delicious. And now I have full control of what the bee mower is doing and with the temp, no draw fan, no afterburner. I just wanted to share this information so you can make a decision for yourself. I hope you have happy roasting and keep making that delicious coffee. Please see description below for more details.